we live? I think we are. Hey, what's up, YouTube? Henry Flores here, coming to you live once again. This time, we're going to take a look at a cult classic, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories for the Sony PlayStation 1. Yeah, when I mean cult classic, I definitely mean cult classic, because this is a game that flew under the radar for a lot of people, unless you're in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community and you're actively seeking for video games. With that being said, this is going to be the, my last Henry's Video Game Reviews video for the year 2020. More to come next year. And speaking of next year, if you haven't already, don't forget to please rate, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all my video game content. Next year, I'm going to be making more videos more consistently on a weekly basis. Enough of my yapping. Let's get into it. This is going to be Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories for the Sony PlayStation. All right. And here it is, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories for the Sony PlayStation 1. This game was released on December 9th, 1999 in Japan. It also was released in the United States and the rest of North America on March 20th, 2002 and November 22nd, 2002 in Europe. That's almost two years after its initial release. Why? Who knows? But what we do know is that once it came out, it was received with mixed review. More on that later. This game was published by Kanan. So, <laughs> you know it must be good. Well, sort of. This game was sold as a two disc PlayStation game case, yet it only contains one game disc. The reason for the dual case is because the game manual was bigger than the typical original PlayStation game manual. And believe me, you are going to want to read this game manual in depth because the game does not explain anything. And no, 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 no. If you dove into the game like I did, already knowing the rules to Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, if you have experience dueling or any of that good stuff, it does not translate accurately into this game. So believe me, you're gonna wanna read this game manual. Um, it does not play like the card game, but I digress more on this a little bit later. As mentioned earlier, this game was uh, met with mixed reviews overall, although more on the favorable side. Uh, enough to warrant a sequel for the Sony PlayStation 2. This game takes place in ancient Egypt and in modern times. and. By modern times, it's 5,000 years after the fact of the original ancient Egypt time. You get to play the role of Atom, Prince of Ancient Egypt, also known as Yami Yugi in the English dub anime, or Dark Yugi in the English translations of the manga. And you also play the role as Yugi Moto. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to refer to the Prince, Atom, as Yami Yugi since uh, that's how I remember him from the anime back in the days. Half of the game takes place between ancient Egypt, the other half takes place in modern time. This game starts in ancient Egypt, and you take the role of Yami Yugi, I know it's Adam, but Yami Yugi, uh, he is sneaking out of the palace to meet up with his friends on the dueling grounds. You know, typical teenager stuff, sneaking out, whatever. So, no exception for a prince. While on the dueling grounds, they witness a ceremony performed by the mages. This ceremony intrigues them because it's darker than the ones that usually perform. After they see this ceremony and being dumbstruck, you end up meeting Kaiba. I mean, he's pretty subtle. So you end up dueling him, obviously you defeat him. Then Yami Yugi returns to his palace where he is met by his mentor, his tutor, his advisor, Simon Muran, who scolds him and tells him to go off to bed afterwards. You find out that Haitian, the high priest, the guy that you see in the beginning of the video, um, has invaded the palace with some sort of dark magic. Moran, the advisor, confronts him and gets blasted by the Millennium Rod. Haitian ends up finding Yami Yugi and demands his Millennium Puzzle. It's your choice to duel him or smash it by listening to your mentor who says smash it. If you duel him, you will get owned. <laughs> You are not going to win that duel unless you have some miracle or some sort of cheating device. Because, obviously, you're just a dumb kid. Once you smash it though, you become sealed inside the Millennium Puzzle waiting for someone else to reassemble it. This was done by your mentor to uh, ensure your safety so you will not get killed. Now, uh, I'm assuming he wasn't doing this for the long haul, but it took 5,000 years for this uh, Millennium Puzzle to be reassembled. And who reassembled it? Yugi Moto. And the base, the rest of the story is basically the anime manga. So I'm not gonna get too much into that. If you know the story of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, it's been sent to death by this point. However, it is still worth playing. Now, 
The story of this game is awesome. Obviously, the story of Yu-Gi-Oh is timeless. It's 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 great and all that good stuff. But the gameplay that was a little bit different. <laughs> The game mechanics and the way the game actually plays differ greatly from the original Yu-Gi-Oh card, uh, trading card game. These changes are also in the game sequel, Yu-Gi-Oh! The Duelist of the Roses for the Sony PlayStation 2. Speaking of which, comment below if you want me to uh, review this game in the future. Personally, I have never played this ga that game, but it it'll, it'll be a fun experience to review it and, and tell you my first thought regarding the sequel. But anyways, let's continue. Now, the fact that the game mechanics, the gameplay, differ greatly from the trading card game is very important and this is why i said earlier you need the game manual the game manual actually explains how to duel and explains the basics of the dueling mechanism inside the game i found myself struggling to understand the brokenness of the actual duels i'm not a pro dueler by any means no 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 but i'm not the worst either i can hold my own and i felt confident enough in myself to just jump right in and duel. But this game is so weird. L let me explain some of the differences that you will encounter if you're used to the trading card game and then you jump into this PlayStation 1 version of the game duel. Okay, so here's some of the differences. Your deck has to be exactly 40 cards. No more, no less. Okay, that's already kind of weird because we're used to maximum 60, 40 minimum. Okay, whatever, that's not a big deal. Let's move on. Uh, when you summon a monster, you don't, you don't normally require a tribute. This, this was weird. This was broken because I found myself dueling and one of my opponents had like a, a level, I think it was a level six monster and just straight up summoned it. No sacrifice, no tribute, no nothing, no, no, nothing. So that was weird. And then I found out I can do it too. And I thought like, oh shit, is the game broken? Uh, yes, it is. It is broken. Another difference is that you must play a card when it's your turn. So no skipping turns. You know how you say like, oh, I skipped my turn. No, you have to play something. Not a big deal, but it's still kind of weird. You get decked out when you draw your last card and you have less than five cards in your hand. So normally to get decked out, you, you, they let you play up until your very last card unless you, you know, forfeit. Uh, in this case, if you have less than five cards in your in your hand, you draw and you already drew your last card, you're done. You lost. Another difference that I noticed is that there's no special summons, such as fusion or ritual monsters. They're just all considered normal summons. And forget about the star system because you can just summon whatever the hell you want. This is what you're gonna encounter right off the bat on your first duel. This is what I found. And I was like, okay, what the fuck is this? It was <laughs> the Guardian Stars system. So the whole point of the Guardian Stars is that it lets you gain 500 attack and defense points if your Guardian Star is superior to that of your opponents. So what is the Guardian Star? It's this weird uh, planetary sign, you know, some sort of like astrology kind of looking thing. Uh, and there is a tier list. So let me explain that to you. So you have uh, you have uh, two types of tier lists. You have the Mercury, Sun, Moon, Venus, Mercury tier list, and the Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune, Mars tier list. Think of this hierarchy as rock, paper, scissors, and that's just for bonus uh, pack points. Not that it means anything, because the you start off with the shittiest deck there is. Another quirky thing that's not, not really a deal breaker, but it's kind of weird to do, is that you can place a card in face down attack mode, but it flips as soon as you attack it. But face down attack mode, that is weird. Because I know face down defense mode, or face up defense mode, or face up attack mode, but face down attack mode, okay, that's, that's just weird. But that's just some of the differences I noticed. There's probably more. Uh, if, you, if I missed anything, please comment below, because like I said, it's kind of quirky in that sense. And that was Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories for the Sony PlayStation 1. Uh, I can understand why it had mixed reviews. The gameplay is a, it's a little weird. It's not terrible, but it is a little weird. The story is beautiful, but then it's like the manga, like the anime. So you're getting nothing really new outside of those little differences I mentioned earlier. Uh, the game is definitely interesting, and I can see why it got a sequel, which, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to see me play it, please comment below. This game is definitely a recommendation for me for Yu-Gi-Oh! and PlayStation fans alike. It is a cult classic. It's either you love it or you don't. It is kind of hard to find complete with game manual but you could always look online if you need that sense or you can watch this video for a reference why not i don't know about you but i'm in the mood to re-watch the anime probably check out some of the manga i never actually read the manga but the anime is what i i my first introduction to Yu Gi Oh and dueling so i might go, go do that and that's it you know that's it my last henry's video game review for the year 2020 this is not my last video of the year next week 
On Friday, Christmas Day, is my last Henry's Flashback Friday for the year 2020. And that is going to be my last video. And I can't wait to see you all next year, the year 2021. It's been a tough year for all of us. So let's see if next year improves. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you all next time here live. All right. Peace.